Hi guys, I am here with Grayson the miniature schnauzer. Grayson is getting a non-traditional pet trim for a schnauzer, a short rounded face and beard, and more blunt trimmed eyebrows that are not as clearly defined in between. So let's get busy. Right, come get busy. He's such a good dog. I'm gonna clipper the trunk of his body, the pattern, with a seven blade. Do you approve? Good. Good boy. I also keep his legs on the short side. I'm go ahead and put him on a harness so I can keep him in the position that I want him. Because he wants to stay right close to me and face me. And I really need to turn him. do is just put him on the anchor. He's going to keep turning to face me. I think. Are you going to stand sideways? That would be awesome, dude. So he lives on a horse farm, runs out in the pastures, and gets himself dirty. His pet parents like to keep him a bit on the shorter side. So in pet grooming, there are different forms of styling. There's breed standard styles. Breed standard styles are, hello buddy. Dogs done to AKC standard or whatever nation you're in, whatever your, your registries um, approve of for the show ring. That's breed standard grooming. Then there's breed profile grooming. Breed profile grooming is grooming the dog to look like a show dog, yet using uh, different methods to achieve the goal. So say like with a schnauzer, a breed profile may include clippers instead of hand stripping on the hand stripped areas, you know, it, it varies from breed to breed what breed profile would entail. Uh, the same with a Cocker Spaniel, you would use clippers on the back as opposed to carding the back and that sort of thing. So breed standard is done um, just like you would do a show dog. Breed profile or quicker, simpler means to achieve a really nice look that looks like a breed standard trim. But the majority of pet grooms are actually freestyle grooms. Pet grooming is 
the stylist listening to the pet parent, the pet parent telling the stylist what it is that they're looking for, and then the stylist accomplishing those goals according to the pet parent's instruction, not according to the breed standard and not according to breed profile. So that is where the real artistry in pet grooming comes in, being able to inter interpret those instructions and then perform them. And, you know, sometimes pet parents have a hard time saying what it is they're looking for, and yet they do expect that it be done. So a good way to think about this, and you really need to give your pet groomer a few different tries to get it right. So think of it this way. Think of going into a restaurant, and instead of looking at the menu and picking something from the menu, you tell the cook, I don't want what's on the menu. I have a different idea in mind. And I want it to taste kind of like this. And I want it to look kind of like that. And you know what I mean? <laughs> or say you go into a restaurant and you say, I want a hamburger. You know, different restaurants have different hamburgers and they have different toppings and they look different and taste different. And say you want McDonald's hamburger, but you're going to Wendy's and then you don't get Wendy's. I mean, you don't get McDonald's hamburger at Wendy's and then you're like, but I wanted a hamburger. Don't you know what a hamburger is? You know, like a puppy cut. Don't you know what a puppy cut is? It's like, well, this is how we do it. Well, that's not how so-and-so down the road did it, you know? So, like I said, grooming for the most part, as far as pet grooming goes, is freestyle grooming. So this guy, I did a basic schnauzer pattern on the body using a seven blade. I used a 10 blade on the outside of the ears and now I'm going over the ears with a 40 blade around the edges. It's a good point. I left his beard further back than the normal line. The typical line would be from one whisker nodule here to one under here to one on the opposite side. This dog, we're leaving it well back I'd say it's about three quarters of an inch past the eye is where the beard line is. And that's because we're going to round his face. I think, you know, for pet groomers who are new to the industry, especially before you, you know, really hone in on your own style and your own way of doing things and your own, um, interpretation of pet owner requests and so on when you're still on that shaky ground you uh you know it, it's hard it's really really hard because you know what you learned in school you know what you see in books you hear what the pet owner is asking and you're still not 100 percent confident in your skills and boy you know, that, that's hard, it's stressful. So I understand. And that's why, you know, I like, I like displaying work for different requests that my clients have given me and that they're happy with, you know? So that way you can see different ideas. It doesn't have to be cookie cutter. It doesn't have to be absolute. The boy breaking. Good boy. Waiting for the water.
water to warm up. handsome boy, isn't it? So when I go to blow dry him, you're gonna see me blow dry the mustache first, brushing everything up and back, and then brushing the eyebrows forward, making sure that face is blow dried just right is going to help me achieve the goal of the look that I want. So again, if you're a newer groomer to the industry, you may be tempted to post pictures of your work in online Facebook groups. Um, my groups are pretty safe. They're listed below to share your work and not worry about it, but um, sometimes there are Groomers out there who are very judgmental. need to be able to give that to them, don't we? Because again, that's what pet grooming is all about. Pet parents.
So my goal is to put together a whole series of videos, just like we're doing with the poodle videos, on schnauzers with different styles. We've also got that with Yorkies and Shih Tzus and such already. Um, with the schnauzers, I want to give several different style options for people to consider. Aside from the breed profile, breed standard looks. Right? Lots of cute stuffs. Yeah. So you know me, I'm usually juggling several projects at once. <laughs> Why not? Sprayed the tub with disinfectant. I used a good quality ear wash in his ears in the tub. That helps to dry up any moisture that may have gotten into the ears and loosen up wax and debris. wrap up his head so the ears the hey, I can't talk the air is not blowing into his ears and tickling him I imagine it can feel quite ticklish with these dogs with these little firm upright ears like these if you'd like to learn more about clipping this style ears uh, you can go to my ear trimming video. I will link it at the end of this one.
have a dry, fluffy schnoz. A Mr. Schnoz, yes, you think you are a schnoz. So I'm gonna go back over the clipper work. Stay right there. Going to start with a tin on top of the head. I am not carving out between the eyebrows. Ten on the cheeks and the throat. Ten on the tummy. Um, a little bit under the tail. Some of that will be with the seven F as well. And the thirty on the pads of the feet. Go back over the edges of the ears with a forty. All that will be on a four and one clipper, except for the seven blade. So ten here. Keeping my eyebrows a little further back than normal. Probably should have done that with a seven. Now that I'm looking at it. Again, keeping my beard line further back than a standard schnauzer trim. Breed profile. Trying to stay out of the cowlick areas where the hair grows in the opposite directions. Switch to the 40. Okay. Back to a tin blade, get around the testicles. I lift up one leg in order to stretch the skin. It's much safer that way. Now using the tin blade, I'm gonna trim his tummy. Stand. I guess that's not a stand, is it? Wrong command. <laughs> in my shop, I usually say up, up, up with this one. For my dogs to know what I mean. I'm going to do under the tail. Stay. Staying out of all this cowlick area. Just doing directly under the tail right now. Good boy. Next, I'm switching to the seven blade. And I'm going to follow a typical schnauzer pet trim pattern. Dropping just below this big muscle here. Dropping under the rib cage, kind of skimming off as we go on the underside.
basically here, you know, you've got your big muscle and it dips in right there. That's basically where I start to sweep back out and just go down about an inch more. And then on the very back of the leg, I can sweep down even further. That's going to give me a really stylish, angulated look to the rear. So dip, drop down below this big muscle here. Come around the rib cage, angle under, skim off, angle under, skim off. So right now I'm staying a little higher on the chest, but I am gonna flatten that out with a longer blade. I do not use the same blade that I'm using on the body. In the chest area, the butterfly area of the chest because the hair grows in opposite directions there. And I wanna use the next longest blade so I don't leave it balded. So again, on the back part of the leg, I'm coming way down, sweeping into the hop. But as far as this hair on the side, I'm following this big muscle around, then dropping it about an inch further down towards the back there. That leaves me some hair to scissor and blend. Go over all this, make sure it's pretty smooth. back end, I don't mind that this hair is short, um, shorter than the front end when we go through these cowlicked areas. So what I'm going to do is just run this seven blade. I want it to end up a 10 blade length here. So by running the seven blade over the cowlicks, it will end up a, a 10 blade. That'll give them a nice clean back end. Gonna sweep down for a well let down hawk here. You don't take all this hair off the inside of the legs. You leave that for scissoring. Even if they're getting a short trim like this dog is getting. front end I'm going to go with a five blade. I'm going to give him a nice flat chest up here with the five. Can you turn, 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 turn. This way, this way, this way. So you notice me going against the grain in parts. So I'm coming over where the hair is growing this way, this way, and this way. I came straight down over it. But here where the hair is just coming down, 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 I went against the grain because I want it all to end up looking basically the same length, if that makes sense. And I'm also going to arc out around the eyebrows a little with the five blade. But again, I don't want too much separation between them and I don't want them too far forward for the style of face that he's getting. Schnauzer-esque, so to speak. <laughs> all right, let's clean off all this hair. Yes. 
So now I'm going to brush all the hair off his feet. Clean off any little clippings that he was stepping in while I was clipping the body. I do your tummy. Yeah, I did. And I'm going to scissor around the feet. So these are going to be nice short legs, but just because they're short doesn't mean they have to lose their style. So basically I want this leg to drop straight from the chest to the toes and anything that comes in front of that area, I'm going to scissor off and the rest is going to stay intact. The shortness will come from the back of the leg and the side of the leg. We don't want any hair sticking out at the elbows, so we're blending straight up into that muscled area where our clip line was. From here, we're dropping our scissors straight down from the chest to the toes, keeping a nice fill of hair on the back of the front leg here between the carpal pad and the table. Stand. can lift up this leg and trim out all this armpit hair. Schnauzers don't need all that. With a lot of my terriers, I like their front legs to look like they're swinging free like a pendulum. And all that armpit hair takes away from the look. The underline should drop straight to the elbow, coming up into the tuck up, which should be right about the last rib. Since he's getting a nice short trim, just going to blend these legs straight up from the furnishing hair on the legs to the clipped area. Just a nice blended line. Turn you around.
Schrittchen. Yeah, you should be able to. So again, even though he's getting clipped nice and short, you can see He's still got this sweep down the back of his leg. He's got nice angulation. Um, he's got style. And you can get style and short all in the same haircut. If you just clippered these legs, they just would not look as nice. I like to demonstrate the patterns for scissoring to encourage people to learn more scissor work and less snap-on comb work. I do use snap-on combs on occasion, but it's really a worthwhile art to learn how to scissor. So now we're going to separate out these front legs a bit. We can get them nice and short on the inside. He gets a haircut once a month, which means I typically take off, you know, a half an inch per month. So I'd give him some depth of the chest here. I'm lifting up the leg, trimming out the armpit hair, angling back down. That separates his legs, plus gives him a nice deep chest. I want to make sure he's not jutting out at the elbows at all. Shh, shh, put your foot down. Put down. Right, I'm going to edge out around the ears. So around the eyes here, taking my shears kind of straight up and down, carving out 
right behind that mustache. his beard so wet. You give him a short chin and round this up and out thinking about an oval shape. Combing the hair up and back as I go. Bring this back and around. Kind of straight across the top. Now I'm gonna comb all this back and I'm not gonna flatten it out like I normally would so I have a nice rectangle shape but I want more of this rounding up but yet blend it in just not super tight and then right above these eyelashes I think I'll take off some of this and when I scissor these eyebrows, I'm actually going to comb them up and back and blend those into that head and then just keep rechecking the mustache as I go, making sure I'm getting the desired effect. Kind of hard when it's a little wet. I'll blow dry it again before I fully finish it. Make sure it looks nice. I'm gonna take a minute and dry that beard. All right, that's a little better. Now I can see what I'm doing without all that wetness. Beautiful. 
beards look much better when they're dry. And now I'm going to comb the eyebrows forward and scissor them. Bit of a blunt look. Softened. Not harsh and eagle-like. Like you typically see schnauzers. Bit more rounded back. Get some of this gray hair off this one. It's making them look too dark colored. With this style, I actually like to keep some of the eyelashes, whereas the tight eyebrows that are tight to the head, you typically trim the eyelashes themselves a little shorter. He's got these beautiful black eyelashes. I know, schnauzer people. You're going to be like, um, say what? Say what, Mr. Zan? What you be talking about? Say what you be talking about, Mr. Zan? Okay. Trying to keep my arms out of the way for you guys. Look how cute. Look how cute. That's what pet grooming's all about. It's cute. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Scissoring in between his back legs. So we're going straight down, leaving a little fill of hair in between the thighs. Even though his legs are cut real short, they still have a little fill of hair in there. Good boy. All right, let's show the world what you look like.
Lily the Schnauzer. She gets a bit more of a teddy bear look. Um, she is a senior. She doesn't have any teeth. We're going to use a four blade on the trunk of her body. Uh, trim her ears from the fold of the ear down. Uh, not quite tipped ears, not fully trimmed ears. And that'll help me to achieve the teddy bear look on the head. So I'm gonna start by trimming the pads of the feet with a 40 blade. Girl. Now I'm going to do the pattern of the body a bit more schnauzer style using a four blade. You can keep this trim fluffier using snap-on combs. I prefer a bit of the schnauzer tightness with the rounded head. That way it keeps a bit of the breed characteristics. Under here, I'm gonna go against the grain, bring it in nice and tight. Next, I'm going to use a 15 blade on the ears. It's okay. It's okay. And then from right where the ear folds, I'm gonna take it tight, leave it furry up towards the head. If you'd like more information on trimming ears safely, Go to my YouTube video for ear trimming for dogs. It has safety tips along with several ear styles. Cropped ears, ears like this, full ear shaving, Scotty ears, Terry Blue Terrier ears, Wheaton Terrier ears, Spaniel ears, tasseled ears, and the like. All right, baby girl, let's get you in the tub.
she doesn't like being wet, so I'm going to use a leave-on conditioner for her. It's a really cold morning outside, and even though I have the heater on, she's an old girl. She's like, get a towel on me quickly, please. Please, please, please. I'm like, okay, let me just wash your bottom first. I'm gonna wish about him first. Sorry, girl. She's like, not in front of the whole world, Miss Suzanne. Seriously? nice ear wash in to loosen up any wax and debris and dry up the moisture in the ears. Wrap her up in a nice warm towel. And disinfect the tub. Let this sit for at least 10 minutes to be effective. To the drying table. I will dry her thoroughly. Good girl. Get some nice warm air on her.
like that. Now brushing everything with the lay of the coat. I'm going to go back over the clipper work. And it's a good glue with four blade. It's a good girl. You clip her all the way up to where the collar sits just behind the ears. Now I'm going to use a 7F blade under the tail. Cleaning up the inner thighs a bit to keep that terrier style going. Teddy bear with a terrier flare. Good girl. Now I'm switching to a ten blade to do the tummy and the corner of the eyes. It's a good old lady. Starting with the corner of the eyes. Now the tongue. And switching back to the 40, redoing the pads of the feet. Next, I'm going to put on a clean blade and go back over the ears. And I'm going to do the edges with a 40 blade. I've already done the center part and that looks fine. This will just clean up and tighten them up, make them look nice and neat. Some people prefer fuzzy ears on their teddy bear trims. If I'm going with a bit more of a terrier outline on the body, then the tighter ears are going to look much better. If I were keeping the body really fluffy, I might go either way on the ears. It depends on the individual and on the pet parent, what they like. I find 
find the largest majority of my clients give me creative license with the dogs, which is awesome. And as long as I give them something they like, they're going to keep wanting it. I hear a lot of groomers say that their clients all want the dog shaved. I think they're sometimes misinterpreting the pet owner's request and then the pet owner gets used to what they do or likes the way the groomer handles the dog and sticks with it. But many times when a client comes in and says, I want my dog really short or I want my dog as short as you can, they really don't mean shaved the largest majority of them. And so I always find out by saying, do you want him shaved down? Do you want the hair like this long, this long, or this long? Most of the time when they say as short as you can, they mean this long. So if you just clarify it, you can start keeping prettier trims on your client's dogs. And shaving down is harder Clipping the body with clippers all the way down the legs and everything is actually harder than learning how to use the scissors. Um, honestly, it's faster this way if you can get used to it. You just have to get yourself accustomed to it, get the dog accustomed to it. But I find it's a much faster trim. It's prettier. And once your customers get used to having some hair on their dogs, um, they like it. But if a client has been trained to have a dog cut real short, they're not going to go for a longer trim. So if you want to start practicing your scissor skills, if you want to start turning out fluffy dogs, do it as new clients come in or new puppies come in, especially new puppies. You can practice most of your skills on new puppies. Being that you can, say if you have a Cocker Spaniel come in, you want to learn how to strip the back as opposed to clipper the back. Just start the puppy off that way. Don't, don't start clipping the back. Start doing it right. And then you can practice. You can't bring about a stripped back on a dog who's been previously clippered. But you sure can, you know, start a new puppy that way. If, you know, you get a breed of dog that, you know, is a purebred and you want to practice a breed standard trim as opposed to a shave down, just start the new puppy off. You know, most new puppy owners are very pliable. They, they trust your opinion on what needs to be done. And so, you know, if you start them off right, if you need dogs to practice breed standard trims on, that's how you do it. You start with the puppies. And then as they grow, you increase in your skills and you um, then have dogs that have proper coats to work with. So I'm trimming her front legs into cylinders, blending right up into the body, nice straight lines, going a little tighter on the back of the leg, keeping her well filled from the carpal pad down to the table with hair. Front of the legs kept a little longer, coming straight down from the chest down to tight around the toes, but well filled in the middle. Good girl. This way, this way, this way, this way. Do the other side. The underline basically starts at the elbow and then tucks up towards the last rib, I'm not taking it in as tight as I would a regular schnauzer pattern because it's got more teddy bear elements, or puppy trim elements, whatever you want to call it. Good girl. And also, if you want to practice fusion styles or um, 
styles that are not traditional. You can do that with puppies as they grow as well. When people ask for suggestions, you say, I think this will look really cute. They say, okay, let's give it a go. And then you work on it. Now your pet parents may not like hearing how we, we practice things. But the truth is, as many groomers go to school, you know, for 300 or 600 hours, and then they've got to learn everything as they go in the field. They just learn the basics, and then, you know, there's like 500 breeds worldwide that are purebred, plus all the designer dogs and mixed breeds, plus all the client variations, client requests, and... You know, just like the schnauzer videos I'm doing this week, you can see how many variations pet parents come up with for styles. And as groomers, especially those fresh out of school, they got to practice these styles. They got to start somewhere, right? And I'm just giving these new groomers some food for thought because I hear so many groomers say, well, I can't do that because none of my clients will let me keep hair on their dogs. And I'll be honest with you, most of my clients would shoot me if I <laughs> cut their dog too short. So I think it's just how you train your clients, right? So a big part of my channel is mentoring groomers who are newer to the industry. That is something I love doing. So, you know, I am going to focus a lot on helping newer groomers find their footing and learn their skills. And people like me, you know, I've been doing this over 40 years professionally, but that doesn't change the fact that I'm learning every day. And I pick up new tips from other groomers all the time. So I love this sharing of information as well because we can uh, help each other. It's like, oh, I never thought about that or I've never done it that way. Let me give it a try. Some things are keepers, some things aren't. But, you know, it's an ever, ever growing, ever learning kind of thing. Because there's so much to learn in pet grooming. People oftentimes don't realize how many styles we have to learn. And it would be easy if it were all breed profile trims and every dog got that cookie cutter look. But they don't. And some schnauzer enthusiasts are going to hate that I am doing uh, non-breed standard trims. But... We get asked for these trims and, you know, I'm going to demonstrate how I do it. All right, you're about ready to go home, Mama. Yes, you are. Looking cute. So this is a shorter version of a teddy bear trim with a schnauzer inspired pattern on the body not too short you can see that the comb literally disappears under the hair so she's got a nice coating of hair bit of a schnauzer look with a teddy bear head if that's what you want to call it call it whatever you want yeah call it whatever you want some people call it a puppy trim. Some people call it a teddy bear trim. I call it a um, non-traditional freestyle trim. So if you want this look and you want to ask your groomer for this look, tell them to use a four blade on the trunk of the body in a schnauzer pattern. Scissor the legs round the head and trim three quarters of the ears short so that they round into the head. Fluffy top knot. That's all you gotta tell them. 
All right, guys, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye.